Hi everyone, my name is Dr Saab Clare, I'm a consultant in acute medicine. I'm going to be teaching you how to use ultrasound to help you gain a successful lumbar puncture. It's safe, it's easy and it's really important for our patients. So I'm going to be going through why you need to be using ultrasound when carrying out a lumbar puncture, really because of the success rates, it's safe, it's simple and it's really important for our patients as it reduces the number of attempts, pain and also post-LP headaches. The evidence behind why Landmark, which is our traditional method, does not work and ultrasound is absolutely key, increasing the success rate, the anatomy of uh, what we're trying to do because if you don't understand the anatomy you won't understand why you may not be successful. Positioning of patients is absolutely key, the key landmarks of what we're looking for and the ultrasound images that you will see. I will go through a practical demonstration as well and the challenges you may face with difficult patients and anatomy and so forth and any questions at the end. However, this talk will not cover indications and contraindications for a lumbar puncture, what equipment you need in the actual LP procedure with the needle insertion, what you need to measure and collect and so forth, the LP result and interpretation and post care and complications. So traditionally we've always been taught from med school that to carry out a lumbar puncture we need to use a landmark technique which is using the top of the iliac crest, the toughest point, as your L5 point. L4, L5 is the position where we want to ideally go into. Now this is a study which shows that essentially by using the landmark technique this is what colleagues actually came up with and you can see that their positioning of what they thought L4, L5 was actually incorrect and it was actually a lot higher, bearing in mind that the spinal cord finishes at L1. So this is really showing how suboptimal the landmark technique is. Also note, our patients are getting bigger, so it's incredibly hard to actually distinguish where are the iliac crests and where are the vertebrae. This is another study where we looked at uh, many anaesthetists who were actually predicting where L4, L5 was. And you can see here, again, that the anaesthetist shows levels significantly higher than L4, L5 using their landmark technique. This was backed up then with MRI scans, which show the exact marking. And, and this is quite serious because what it shows is that landmark technique is suboptimal and may lead into unsuccessful lumbar punctures and many attempts, you know, as we have seen in, in real practice, have to then be escalated to anaesthesis or fluoroscopy. The Society of Acute Hospital Medicine recommends that actually we should be using ultrasound guidance when carrying out any lumbar punch and the reason is because it improves LLP success, the number of attempts and hence the number of traumatic taps and therefore less representation of patients coming in with post lumbar puncture headache and therefore is cost effective and better for our patients. Not even mentioned, and we've not even talked about the pain that our patients suffer as well because it's very uncomfortable. We've talked about a few studies, but essentially studies are showing that landmark failures rates of up to nearly 20% and incredibly helpful in our patients who are getting bigger. And our patients are getting bigger with BMIs, you know, even more than 35 shows a very high correlation with a failure rate. But what's great and what's good news is that brief training um, can, it can really empower you with the skills and you can essentially pick up the ultrasound images with high quality and able to understand the anatomy which then can lead you to use ultrasound when carrying out lumbar puncture. This is some more data just to reiterate the evidence behind um, how ultrasound is great in um, when using it with lumbar puncture. Here you go, the likelihood of success number needed to treat is 11. There are few needle passes. There are shorter time to complete the procedure, lower incidence of traumatic LPs. And I, again, as I mentioned previously, it's diminished pain. And this is really important for our patient journey. It's an absolute vital skill for our acute medicine, medics and beyond, generalists, and anybody carrying out such procedure. We know that 20% of our acute medical take is neurology and that we know that lumbar punches are actually life-saving, especially in bacterial meningitis. But we 
as our core bread and butter, we see lots of conditions that need lumbar punctures from subarachnoid, intracranial hypertension, guillain barre just to name a few. It's a core skill for us. And as I've mentioned earlier, it's really key. And, and in our unit, we always make sure we carry out an ultrasound before we even escalate that we are unsuccessful to radiology fluoroscopy. So the anatomy is really important. So you really need to understand what you're looking at because when you're scanning the patient, you'll need to be able to say to yourself, okay, well, this is bone and this is the intervertebral space. So this is just uh, some infogram showing you that um, the spinous processes, the articular processes, and an X-ray showing you the discs as well as the intervertebral spaces that we'll be going into. This is another diagram showing you actually the anatomy and spaces that we need to go into so from the skin subcutaneous tissue the supraspinous ligament into the interspinous ligament and then breaking into the ligamentum flavum before we hit the space please note that the spinal cord terminates in level l1 in adults and l2 l3 in pediatrics as well an mri just reiterating that point of where we want to hit. So we need to go to L4, L5 space or L3 or L4 space. And another diagram just reiterating the anatomy of what you're trying to do. Okay, so next we're going to talk about positioning of the patient. Positioning is absolutely key when carrying out a lumbar puncture. There are two positions that you can use, either the patient in a sitting position or in the left lateral position. We know that when we are um, using the left lateral position, this is when we're trying to measure pressures. The sitting position, the pressures will be inaccurate, so please bear that in mind. Many patients like to do a lumbar punch in sitting position because this is where you can flex the patient and be, tend to be more successful. So I'm going to talk about both positions. And in the sitting position, you, you would get them to be quite relaxed, perhaps put a pillow over a table for them to lean over. And this will then enable you to find out where the, the, the best space is. And as you can see, this shows that when you're flexing, the space increases, hence the increased chance of you being successful with lumbar puncture. In the left lateral position, it's really key that the patient is perpendicular and keeps their shoulders vertical. The hips are vertical as well and the knees are drawn right up to the chest. You can see this patient is being pulled up by the neck as well. Flexing the neck does not make a difference and actually it tends to put the shoulders off balance and can cause problems. So try not to do that. So the key is keeping the shoulders and the back and the hips as vertical as possible whilst flexing over. And this is a photo of showing how you can just see how off balance this patient is. The shoulders and the hips are off balance. So this is likely, you know, the, the midline is completely off and it's unlikely this LP will be successful. OK, so now we're going to move on to the actual scanning. So we're going to use a curvilinear probe, which is a low frequency probe. And that is key because we want to look at deeper structures. If you have someone who's incredibly slim, you can use a high frequency linear probe, um, but you tend to, um, it really does depend on the habitus of the patient. Bearing in mind, we tend to be using ultrasound in our bigger patients. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scan the patient over the spinous processes so you know where the midline is. And this is a position you'll be putting your probe and what you will essentially see is bone and behind bone will be a black space because as you know that ultrasound cannot penetrate bone and this just essentially tells us you're over the spinous processes. Then the next thing you want to do is you want to move your probe um, one to two centimeters laterally away from the midline and this is where you'll be scanning over the articular processes, like so. Here you will see a sawtooth appearance, and this is of your L3, L4, L5. The sacrum will be a horizontal line, much longer, and essentially indicate to you whereabouts you are. I tend to scan from the bottom upwards, so seeing where is the sac sacrum, and then scan up to L4, L5, 
L3 and so forth. Then the next thing you want to do is move slightly back medially, which will then change the appearance of a sawtooth appearance. So you're not on the articular processes, but you will then see this camel hump appearance. And you just want to tilt the probe so you're looking deeper inside. And this is essentially, it's called the paramedian interlamellar um, oblique sort of view. And this is essentially what you will see. And what you will want to see is the intrathecal space, which is outlined here in the orange and now the yellow line. So this is your intrathecal space where you want to go to. And this slide now demonstrates further the anatomy. So you've got your lamina, your epidural intrathecal space, your ligamental flavum. So from this point, you know where you are. And you can actually do your lumbar puncture from here, but it's really important to change the probe to transverse to be accurate to find out where the best space is. So you will change the probe transversely and then you will start scanning and you will do that over the spinous process again to know that you are over bone. And as you can imagine, what you will see is really this image and nothing behind it because it's all black because remember, ultrasound cannot penetrate bone. But then you will move to the next level into the interlaminal area and then you will see this image where you will see the interspinous ligament going into the anterior complex into the intrathecal space. And I will just emphasize that for you. So the long vertical black area is the interspinous ligament. And then the orange area is the anterior complex. And the yellow area is the intrathecal space that you will go into. And essentially you can mark this area um, and that will indicate the space for you to go into. I'm now going to demonstrate this on somebody in the left lateral position for you. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate how to do the ultrasound guided lumbar puncture in the left lateral position. We talked about earlier how positioning is absolutely key. So make sure the patient's back is really perpendicular and getting those knees right up to the chest whilst keeping both the shoulders and the hips in, in, in a straight line. So first thing we're going to do is scan the patient in the midline over the sacrum and the spinous processes. Here we will see a horizontal white line which identifies your sacrum and then you will see just bone for your spinous processes and it will be black behind this because we know that ultrasound cannot penetrate bone as the image shows. Then from this position, when we found the L4, L5 position, we're going to move the probe one to two centimeters laterally. And here we will be scanning the articular processes and you will see a sawtooth appearance as shown. As you tilt the probe upwards towards the midline, this sawtooth appearance will change into more camel humps. And then we can see the intrathecal space as demonstrated by the image. This is the space that you want to go into. Here you can also mark the area so you know that which space you'll be going into. From this position you can change the probe transversely like so and you if you've hit above the spinous process you will see this image. Then you need to move up one area or down one one area and then you will see the interspinous ligament, the anterior complex and the intrathecal space and this is the space that you need to go into and you can mark this area like so. The challenges you may face are those patients with severe osteoarthritis, kyphoscoliosis or any previous surgery so always take a detailed history if you find that it's going to be too challenging because of that history, then it may be easy to go to fluoroscopy straight away.